My name is Gianluca Zanna. I was an Italian by birth and I became an American by choice. Our lives and freedoms are in danger. This is not a dream. If you're listening to this broadcast, you are the resistance. Welcome to Love, Guns and Freedom. We're not afraid. Here we go, another Sunday, another show. You're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom. Look at Zanna on K-Talks 1340 AM and also 104.1 FM. Well, a lot of things going on. First of all, it's kind of humid. I'm sure you're feeling it. Monsoon season is on the way here. Honestly, I don't like humidity. I like the heat. I like when it's hot, you know, dry, beautiful. When it's humid, oh gosh. But anyway, we will survive it. We will survive this and we will survive many other things. I tell you, life is full of challenges. Uh, everybody, everyone has their challenges. When you think about yourself, say, oh my gosh, you know, my life is uh, so miserable. I have so many things I have to face. Everything you can imagine. Remember, there's always somebody that may be also in a be- worse shape than you are. Maybe there is also somebody in a better shape. But I tell you that for sure someone else that is in a worse shape than you are. And sometimes, you know, I'm learning for myself. Uh, it's overwhelming. It can be overwhelming. The only thing you can do now, when times are tough, you need to get tougher. That's my lesson in life I learned. I was able to survive and also thrive in many other situations before. I mean, I grew up in a kind of dysfunctional family where pretty much, you know, at 10 years, when I was 10 years old, uh, I left the house and I started my new journey into boarding schools. It wasn't exactly fun. Um, of course, even before that, I didn't have exactly family unity, but still. And then, of course, from the boarding school to the military school and then to my challenge, to my journey, to find really who I was and uh, where I wanted to do, uh, where I wanted to go, excuse me, where I wanted to be. And I decided, you know, of course, after having all my experiences and, you know, journeys and also internal emotional turmoils, yes, I wanted to come to America. I wanted to become an American. And that's, for me, the most important thing at the end. Looking at the future, living in the present, uh, enjoying the present, and learning from the past. Because the past, at that point, I don't want to look at the past like, oh, I wish I'd done that, or I wish I did that. The past, all I can say, I've done everything I could. I've done mistakes, definitely. But at the end, I want to learn from these mistakes. At least those mistakes, somehow, can be worth something. But I don't want to live in the past. I want to live in the present. And at that point, I would like to, uh, you know, I would like really to, to, to build a better future. That's what I'm going to Today's show is going to be a little different. You know, I always like to talk about different things. The show is called Love, Guns, and Freedom uh, on K-Talks 1340 AM on also 104.1 FM. I just want to say um, the show is more about than politics. It's more than just a new world order. The show is also about humanity. Because after all, if they kill that humanity in us, the globalists, the elite, they were trying to enslave humanity, they already won. If we are completely miserable, if we don't find joy in life, what is the purpose to fight for life? So the show is about a little bit of everything. Sometimes, you know, people may be surprised. I go from uh, Italian recipes to serenade to music, and then, of course, we go straight hardcore, you know, the latest legislation against freedom, gun rights, um, everything between vaccinations and things like that. Right now, let's start a little bit the show with, first of all, um, as I said, humanity. Humanity, we have challenges, as I said. I have challenges. And sometimes I feel like overwhelmed even to be on the show. I wake up in the morning, Sunday, and say, wow, why am I doing this? I've been doing that for almost uh, more than five years right now. Uh, this is not like a paid job. You know, I don't look for money in this activity. For me, it's like my little uh, voluntarism. I don't go to churches. I don't go to, you know, no, I'm not there praying or sharing the gospel. I'm just a regular guy. I have my own beliefs. But when it comes down to my main belief, it's about freedom. And that's what I'm trying to spread. 
It's about respecting each other. It's about that the government shouldn't, you know, be our master, but they should work for us. It should be really small, very, very small, if at all, seriously, because the government, unfortunately, is like a baby. More it eats, or more it eats, the more it gets bigger and out of control. Even in our foundation, you know, of our, our what's supposed to be republic, the original idea was a good idea, but then it became out of control because, unfortunately, government is made by humans. And humans can be good, decent, or bad. And when bad people get into government, government will become bad. So it's pretty much the story. The Constitution, the Bill of Rights, at the end, must be upheld by human beings. And that's the bottom line. If we have criminals behind, we're going to have trouble. That's the story. All right. Uh, right now, of course, beep and beep everywhere. I would like to focus a little bit on humanity. I am really, I told you, you know very well my position on abortion. I am pro-life to the bottom of my feet, from bottom to up. Uh, the point is, it is disturbing to see people, how humanity is being kind of uh, desensitized, you know, completely make cynical when you realize that we're talking about little human beings, so little, they cannot even defend themselves. They cannot talk, but they feel. And no matter how, how, you know, who told you that three months is okay and four months is not okay, or nine months now is okay if the government states so, just before the, the little baby is ready to pop out of the mother's, you know, uterus, okay, now that's not okay. I mean, life is life. And I, I challenge you, you know, to really look at... Uh, some of these videos, that they're really disturbing. Uh, little human beings uh, being a, with their skull crushed and parts dismembered and, and even just left die, you know, left die because they're still alive when they get out. And there, and there are videos, there are testimonials. This is such a, a very, very, make me cry sometimes, I'll tell you. And uh, the point is, this is not about differences of opinions. You know, people say, you know, I like red, you like blue. Fine. Who cares? I like this soccer team, I like that soccer team. That's fine. And this is not even about, uh, uh, you know, my body, my choice. No. Your body is one thing. Now you are hosting in your body another human being. That thing should be really pretty easy to understand. So much that in many criminal cases, when, let's say, uh, a mother gets murdered, a pregnant mother get murdered with a child, there is a double homicide. But more important, you can see there is a little heart beating. There are, uh, by the way, feelings, uh, f physical uh, pain, emotions. That's my point. It is so disturbing. You know, what they're doing now here, they're using abortion as an instrument, first of all, of population control. I mean, the statistics uh, says that the last uh, year, all over the world, uh, just America, forget about it. We're talking about millions, millions. I don't even want to get to the right number because you can figure it out. But millions of uh, uh, cases of abortions. Now, um, people can say, no, there are abortions for um, situations like uh, rape. There are abortions just people that they want to get lazy because they don't want to buy a condom. For me, life is life. Uh, for me, life is life. You know, at that point, uh, there is an innocent life. has no fault. Uh, even if it is rape, he has no fault or she has no fault. How can we kill, murder somebody for somebody else's fault? Now, I don't want to say I'm here right now to tell you what to do, but I tell you my opinion. I just wish you understand that there are many cases of people that they were born from rape. Uh, some people say, I don't want to have the child at that point. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not your moral or legal judge. The point is I tell you one thing, that life could be, a very, very important life in this world. And there are cases of uh, children born from rape that today they are grown up, and the mother and the child, they have a very, very special relationship. But my point is, I'm trying to say, let's not forget the globalists that try to completely uh, bring us into the dark side, not just to the concept of uh, abortion as instrument of birth control, because that's pretty much what they're trying to do it, to control the population, but also to bring us into the dark side. If you accept evil, if you are somehow responsible, directly or indirectly, of a mass murdering operation like abortion, uh, think about it. They already completely conquer your soul. 
That's what it's about. I really truly believe it's a battle for the soul. Now, you know, I'm not a Christian. I'm not here to tell you what type of belief uh, or type of things to do. I have my own spiritual belief. Um, I'm kind of different from the average person out there. But my point is, it doesn't matter. Good is good. Evil is evil. Okay? This is not from a point of a Baptist church or Catholic church. Okay? I'm not there. But still, I believe in good and I believe in, in, in evil. And uh, it's a battle that uh, is happening in this dimension. And I truly believe that uh, you're silent, become consent. That's why I'm on the air. That's why I'm saying, you know, what I say. I may be wrong. That's fine. I, I challenge you. And uh, if you want to be on my show, I always welcome you. Just be respectful and I will give you the microphone. But beside that, the point is we got to do something because otherwise we'll become part of this scheme. There is so much information. Uh, normally I play some little video, but the point is um, you, I already spoke enough about abortion. But I just watched a video the other day I posted on Facebook, and I find it always more and more disturbing. Thankfully, because I don't want to become like uh, used to it, I want to be sure that I always remember that, by the way, I'm a survivor of a potential abortion. My mother had a choice when I was born. She was in Germany. She wasn't expecting me. She was young. My parents, they were kind of broke, and they had all the excuses in Germany to go and make an abortion. My mother said, no, I don't want to do an abortion. Even technically, she would have been in danger because her body wasn't ready for a birth. Today I'm here, 51 years later, and I'm grateful to my mother. I'm grateful to my mother for her courage, for her love. And that's all I can say. And every time, you know, we look how many things we can interact with each other. I have my own life. I try to do as best as I can to interact with this world and try to share things that I hope people can enjoy or people can somehow benefit. And at the same time, of course, I'm part of this give and take relationship with others. So we all interact in some ways. In some ways, we all can need each other. All right. So this is about abortion. This is my position. And I'm really looking for somebody that I may have probably next couple of weeks uh, that really is against my opinions. I mean, is opposite opinion. You think that abortion is fine? You think that little fetus eats your body? Uh, you think that is okay to, to murder a child just because you don't want him or you don't want her? Uh, you think that's not painful? You think that somehow it's supposed to be um, restrictions? I mean, I don't care, honestly, two or three months or nine months. For me, abortion is abortion. This is my kind of black and white position. But the point is, remember, there are also other options. If you don't want the child, there are Families out there would pay to take it for adoption. Think about that. Why don't you want to give them a chance? Seriously, if you don't want a child, I understand. Maybe you're too young. Maybe you don't want the responsibilities. Maybe you cannot be a good mother or father. I understand. But there are options, so many options for families who are looking and would really even pay you to have a child. That would be a very good solution, in my humble opinion. That probably would make everybody happy. Because at that point, there is no more need to murder. At that point, life can continue. All right, a little bit of a break. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. We'll look at Zana. We have now some news, some good stuff, some bad stuff. This is pretty much the show. We alternate good and bad. We alternate, you know, challenges and things that somehow we want to look for, you know, a little bit of a break. Sometimes we need a break, too. We are human beings. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Luca Zanna. Do not go away. Are you ready to get lost in lust? Immerse yourself in a thunderstorm of emotions and passion. Order John Luca Zanna's new book, Perfectly Crazy, 69 Erotic Visions and Love Poems with Forbidden Erotic Italian Phrases. Perfectly Crazy by John Luca Zanna. Available all over the world at Amazon.com and www.zana.us. Here we are. We are back. You're listening to Love, Gans, and Freedom with Luke at Zana on Talks 1340 AM and also 104.1 FM. The show continues today. We talk about abortion. Even just, you know, sometimes it's not about talking about the data or the information, what happened, the latest number. It's about the principle. It's about the universal principle, if you stand for life or if you stand for murder. That's, of course, according to me. All right. Now, let's talk about something that is the next level of the, by the globalist, next type of strategy, to destroy humanity, to feast on humanity. Um, you heard about just the surface of the iceberg. 
Mr. Epstein, Mr. Epstein, whatever his first name, uh, this billionaire that got caught, and uh, do you have enough evidence they could have put it to jail 10 years ago, if no more, about this uh, sex trafficking, you know, with minors, by the way, not only with regular people, on this island. The point is, this is just a little bit of the tip of the iceberg. This is a way that politicians somehow get controlled. This is a way that uh, the elite also have the chance to uh, blackmail people. That's a fact. But the, the darker part, it is not just as an instrument to control people. It is also the way how they really feast on humanity and also how they use the children, because they are children. Many times these people are children. And they all through the government's agents, let's say agency, they get somehow one of the biggest way to be recruited or be kidnapped is starting from the local uh, social services. There's evidence, even in Italy, just last few weeks, they've been arresting uh, politicians and uh, social services that they were completely, you know, enough evidence to be arrested that they were kidnapping children from families with the only purpose to share them, sell them, and exploit them sexually and doing terrible things. Now, this is not just some sex pervert that is want to exploit a child. And by the way, it would be bad enough to exploit children sexually. You deserve death, my opinion. The problem is is also a darker point, a darker level. There are people out there who truly believe in the devil. And uh, these people need also children for their sacrifices. The cremation of care. You know, Alec Jones, he was probably the first one to expose on video, you can check it out, the Bohemian Grove. Some of you may already know this information. Some of you may never heard it before. I invite you to please Google it. Even Google is part of the problem, but still try to find out the videos of the cremation of care, Bohemian Grove by Alec Jones. You will see in this uh, ritual, it's a human sacrifice. They're mocking, supposedly, a human sacrifice in front of this uh, owl, huge owl uh, made of stone, uh, where they burn alive a little baby. Now, do you know really what's happening there? We have no idea. By the way, this is a, a serious enough if you think that uh, somebody is mocking a murder. And they said, think that you have in this uh, ceremony people that supposedly they have control of uh, our nuclear um, heads or they have control of our treasuries or have control of our finances, have control of our um, governments. These are not just regular psychos out of a bar. Okay, in San Francisco. These people are truly the upper management of the global New World Order. That's the reality. So, the point I'm trying to make, you see, it's all connected. Abortion is connected to this sex trafficking and slash murdering and human sacrifices. All the children, there are hundreds of thousands of children that every year disappear. They never get found anymore. You, don't you think maybe something happened to them? There is a very, very dark side that is among us that is feasting for their purposes, their rituals, and also for their pleasure on little innocent souls, babies, children, and even young, young men and young women. Now, this is the point. We need to stand up. We need to stand up. The first thing we must really understand, and somehow, um, let's say, we need, to, uh, we, need to face, we need to face reality. The reality may be harsh, may be hard even to think about. It may be disgusting, may be disrupt your day. You may say, you know, I don't want to talk about this. I want to have a nice hike today. I want to have a little peace. Leave me alone. No, I don't want to leave you alone. I mean, you can do whatever you want. Turn it off. But I cannot let you just avoid this thinking because it's disturbing. Because there are innocent people out there. They are crying. They've been kidnapped. They've been kept captured. They've been tortured, they've been sexually abused. They've been completely also, really seriously. You may think I'm crazy, but they are rituals where they eat them. You know the restaurant, I already talked about that on the show a few, few months ago, the Cannibal Club. You can fi find it, there is a website, it's in Los Angeles. Uh, they are proud that they eat the fresh and the youngest human meat. It's not a spoof, not a jail joke, it's real. There are many personalities. There are also a uh, very famous, at least famous singer that uh, she used to sing with uh, in, in the 90s. 
uh, Galas, a uh, Greek, Greek singer, and she sings there, and she has songs for in honor of Lucifer, or the devil, whatever you want to call him. Okay, so this stuff is real. This stuff is real. And the point is, what do you think? How do they, how do they get these children? And there is another part, you know, that we heard many times. There is a lot of information out there. If you want to dig it out, that uh, there is a special drug created by drinking the blood of these children, that when they're under stress, they create this sort of, of hormone that somehow gives some sort of a boost. And supposedly, this, this blood, it gets your, uh, especially if you're an older person, it keeps you rejuvenating you. So it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff to believe, a lot of stuff to digest, but the information is out there till you have it. I just ask you one thing. Don't believe me? Do your own researches, but more important, after you realize there is some truth here, and there is truth, uh, start to, the best thing you can do, the minimum you can do, start to prepare other people to learn about that. Till we don't reach critical mass, we cannot be able to do anything. But more important, do not be shy. Even sometimes it can be dangerous. I mean, there was a former uh, state senator from Arkansas, um, a lady, was investigating about these uh, very disturbing things about child trafficking, and guess what? They found her dead, uh, like just uh, uh, a few weeks ago. So that's the point. Now, I'd like to talk about something still related to this. It's still something that I think it's important. It's about fathers. It's about couples that do not go along, unfortunately. Because I tell you, it always would be nice when a family stays together. Uh, but sometimes things don't go. Sometimes don't go. Sometimes you can try all you want. And you can blame it on one person. It doesn't matter. The result's what matters. The result's what matters. And I'm not talking for myself or anything. I'm just telling you in general. You can try, some try, try some, excuse me. Sometimes you can try and try and try. And at that point, you need to say, what is the best thing for our children? What is the best thing also for me? Because I tell you, if you're going to repeat this pattern over and over, and you realize maybe you don't have the qualities to overcome these problems, you're going to die slowly of a painful death, you're going to be unhappy, and you make everybody else unhappy. And the children do not deserve to witness all this. So sometimes it's better be kind of separated, but at the same time be present. The problem is, you know, children belong to both the parents. Yes, the mother should be the person, in my humble opinion, that should be there, for the children because it's the mother. The father's supposed to go out there and go hunt and fetch the food and, you know, like in the old days and take care of the family. The mother's supposed to be there and be sure that the children are taken care of. That would be the ideal world, in my opinion. I know many ladies say, you know, I don't want to do that. I want to go to work. That's great. At least I'm, I'm not saying that's wrong. But sometimes it's difficult to have a child to give him the, the support he needs, the education he needs, the principle he needs if you also work. You work double, uh, yes, you make more money, but also, you know, you have to spend more money at the end. And, uh, you know, you got to get a babysitter if you don't have family behind and all other things. At the end, you got to have two cars. At the end, you got to spend more gas. I mean, I'm not trying to sound like Dr. Laura here, okay? I give you information, about, you know, tips about how to run your family. But my point, think about it. If kids need your mother. The only point sometimes when families are separated, it's sad when, the, you know, there are, personal animosity, and you have to a point that maybe the child starts to get influenced by the, 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 you know, the feelings of the mother. And even if she doesn't do it intentionally, it can become kind of transparent jealousy or can be you know, rage, and the child takes a position that is not objective but becomes almost like just because influenced by it directly or indirectly by the mother. And the father becomes kind of... Let's say alienated, and that's sad. But beside that, my point is, family should always be together. Even if they are separated, they should always have some sort of uh, um, strength because the child, the children, must be always protected by both parents because there are evil, evil bastards out there who feast on situation like that. And that the first thing is starting from the government. The government love to find, uh, to, you know, to them, a government agency needs to justify their salaries. So how do you think they go, the CPS agents, how do you think they go out there and justify their position? They need to create more and more drama, more and more cases. So that's my point. So family must be preserved. 
even when there are personal situations that somehow do not allow that. Now, um, still, I would like to talk about many things, and we will talk about many things, but before I want to say life. Life is not just for the unborn. Now they are destroying life. Also, people, they are already being born. Uh, in France, you know, think about it. Vincent Lambert, a disabled man, the court ordered to be starved to death in a French hospital, died this morning after nine days without food or water, showing a remarkable will to live despite the cruel death of thirst that doctors had prepared to him. Oh my gosh, this is the French version of Terry Schiavo, departed from this earthly life at 3.24 a.m. on Thursday, July the 11th. He died of heart failure induced by malfunction of his kidney in Reims University Hospital, in the room where he had been kept under lock and keys for the last six years. Minutes after his passing, his half-nephew Francois, favorable to his relative being denied food and water, informed the media that Vincent had died. Nine days murdering, ma na, excuse me, nine days torturing, nine days starvation, nine days, you know, without water. This is the most disgusting, disgusting things. I mean, talking about the Nuremberg trial, they should be on the Nuremberg trial. These French people, whatever are these people that they, somehow the state allows this type of behavior. Of course, continues, you know, whatever uh, is that certificate will say Vincent Lambert did not die of natural causes, nor as consequences of his serious handicap or brain damage. His death was deliberately thought about a medical decision to deprive him of food and funds that was approved by Fr France's highest court and the European Court of Human Rights. Think about the European Court of Human Rights. Such a joke. You have no rights in Europe. You can't even speak freely. You will be arrested if you even criticize the European community. You understand that? This is pure fascism. France deliberately ignored the request of the United Nations Committee for the Rights of Disabled Person that asked for provisional measure and for the end of life procedure, blah, blah, blah. Now, you know, let's talk for a moment about that. This is just another aspect of abortion. They want to make you sure that you understand that murdering an innocent life before it's born is okay. And now, murdering a life that somehow is not productive anymore, it's okay. <coughs> Excuse me. But think about it. Now next is going to be, of course, also the seniors. They already talk about that in Canada. Hey, if you're a senior, you're going to die. Uh, especially when there is that. That's why they push so much for the socialized medicine. That's another way for the eugenics, for the population control elite, to completely control who has access to medical resources or not. By the way, not because they're medical resources, they save your life. I mean, if you go to a regular doctor, it's going to kill you anyway. But still, sometimes you need surgery, sometimes you need some basic things. So, what is really sad, this man, this human being, not only is being murdered, but he's being tortured. If they really wanted to uh, somehow take his life, because somehow in their budget, you know, because it's about budget, uh, we don't want to anymore give resources to this, to, to this man. But, you know, of course, they can still waste money for illegal aliens, for refugees, for wars, for terrible, stupid things, you know, high salary for bureaucrats. You know, how much do you think a bureaucrats in these commissions take for a month to decide if you live or if you die? They are not regular jobs, okay? So anyway, the sad thing is they don't just murder him, but they torture him for nine days. You please try to stay nine days without water or fluids. Nine days. Three days, normally you die. Nine days, it's a painful excruciation death. And the sad thing is they should at least, they really wanted to murder this human being. They should have at least have the balls to say, you know what? Want to take responsibility? Yes, we are murdering you because we, the state, decide that you are useless. At that point, at least you have a black and white. But no, the hypocrisy, hypocrisy. At least they should have given him a clean death. But no, it's not only murder, it's also um, pure torture. So that's my point. This is pl part of the plan, the globalist plan. That's why I am against all, every type of, uh, let's say, control government medi medicine. 
the, the government will dispense according to their morals who needs or who doesn't need that. How do I know that? Forget about friends. I see my mother. She's still in Italy. I see her. She's an older lady. And when she needs something, oh gosh, you crazy. If you want to go to the public doctor, you wait six months sometime for a real uh, operation or things you need. So she has to go and pay out of her pocket, my pocket, of course, her pocket, uh, things that she really needs. So that's the very sad things. That's why I say stay. Government will be used by the elite to destroy humanities. They don't come after you directly. You know, after all, they're just a bunch of uh, chicken necks, you know, um, old men, most of them, or even women. They are just cowards. They are a very small group of people. But this small group of people controlled government. And through governments, they will decide how you will flourish. They will decide how you will die. They will decide how much money you can make or not. This is not about, uh, uh, you know, Bernie Sanders or Hillary or Trump. These are just the face that you see. The people behind really decide their agenda. And they support the, their horses. Little break. You're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom. Today we're really going to have, you know, defending life, uh, understanding the abortion, understanding the legalized murder by the state for the final purposes of, of course, not just... Uh, Population control, but also make you part of the evil plan, conquering your soul. Don't go away. He's a songwriter, a poet, a rifleman, I'm not afraid. and a constitutional activist. I'm not afraid. Italian by birth, I'm not afraid. American by choice, Gianluca Zana. I'm not afraid. And his new CD, Love, Guns, and Freedom. 16 powerful songs on one CD from the heart of a patriot. For download or to order the CD, go to www.lovegunsfreedom.com. That's www.lovegunsfreedom.com. Lyrics for your mind, music for your heart. John Lucasana's new CD, Love, Guns, and Freedom. Here we go, you're back, we are back, you're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom, Luca Zanna on K-Talks, 1340 AM, and also 104.1 FM. Okay, the show continues. Um, today was about mostly, uh, not mostly, but at least the beginning about abortion, about life, about how the elite, they're trying to successfully, unfortunately, I would say, disenthesize us, uh, make us kind of cynical when it comes down to legally murdering or suppressing life of innocent people. After all, you know, they divide us, and then they will start to go, you know, in different blocks, you know, first the innocent, unborn, then, of course, the people that they are useless to society according to their criteria, when the medicine is uh, administrated by uh, the state, you know, if you don't produce, you don't get medicine. Look, I mean, this is a fact. As I said, no conspiracy. And then, of course, uh, uh, the elderly, eventually, they will come to an end, too, before their times. Now, let's talk to uh, the right of self-defense, because this is so important. That's why um, the first way we can somehow empower ourselves to fight evil is to be able to face evil, be able to defend ourselves against evil. Evil comes in different levels. I mean, there is an evil at a larger scale perpetrated by the governments. There is also evil at lower scales by criminals or people that they can try to somehow with coercion try to impose their will on you. Let's start from the basic. The basic is that we must learn how to defend ourselves. Uh, starting from that, we can somehow also open ourselves, our mindset, to a bigger evil that try to enslave us. So the first thing starts with our body. We need to empower our bodies. We talk about that. You know, here I'm broadcasting from Kingman for some Force Self-Defense Training Facility. It's something that is my project since almost one year. We're getting to the anniversary in uh, October. And uh, the purpose of this facility is to empower human beings to stay free because uh, human beings deserve the right, they have the right to defend themselves and nobody should coerce them to do anything against their will. So we start from our empty hands and then, of course, we go from there to 
handguns, and we go to, uh, let's say, different things that they are really, really important. Objects, you know, you can use objects to defend yourself. But at the end, you know, of course, firearms is the ultimate self-defense tool, if you can. But sometimes you're not that likely to be so close to a firearms, or maybe you are too close to your attacker, and you must learn also to uh, use empty hands. I had really the pleasure to um, train with... Uh, a lady, um, originally from Wisconsin. And by the way, we had her on the show. Her name is uh, Wendy. And uh, we had a great time uh, really enjoying learning how to shoot. This lady never really had shot a gun before. Honestly, she was a little afraid of guns because she had bad experiences. And that's very understandable. But I'm very pleased that she gave me the opportunity to uh, initiate her on this path of responsible gun ownership. So much that uh, I like what I like about ladies. They, they have no ego. Ladies different from guys. Normally, not every guy, of course, but normally ladies, they want to learn. That's it. It's not about showing that they are right. They want to learn, and uh, they don't have bad habits because most of the ladies, at least in this case of Wendy, she never had a chance to really shoot uh, besides, you know, by very terrible circumstances. But the point is she has no bad habits. So she lists them, and I tell you, in just three times to the um, range, with uh, one time, uh, we do four hours dry practice um, training. It means uh, we do not touch any firearm, live firearm with ammo, but just, you know, simulating dry firing without ammo. She's so unbelievable um, getting it, okay? She is doing great. And I'm very excited because she's excited. That's the most important thing. It's not just about shooting the gun. It's also about having fun. It's also about, uh, seriously, you see... Uh, when the little magic light in your eyes starts to light up, and from something that you hated the gun, now you start to have control of the gun, you feel responsible for the gun, and also you, of course, you understand the great potential that the gun can give you, the potential to defend yourself. It's like a hammer, you know. You can have a hammer to break things or to build things. The life can be a tool that can be used to, Take a life, to destroy a life, or save a life. We say, you know, in our classes at Kingman for some force, when we come down to firearms classes, we have guns as a tool of last resort, number one. Number two, in our hands, or law-abiding people, guns do not take lives, but save lives. That's the purpose. We're not yet to take anybody's life, but all we want to do is save lives. So, great experience. I want to say thank you, Wendy, to, for the trust have given me in to our uh, you know uh, and by the way the training will continue i'm very happy but just in case um just to let you know other people wants to join my private classes by the way she's taking private classes we also have uh, women self-defense handgun classes we have handgun classes for self-defense for women only very affordable and you can go to kingmanforsomeforce.com or find us at fa on facebook you can see all the schedule that we have there but also we do private classes that are really nice because you know in less hours i can give you a complete uh, personal attention and work on you and make it really happen fast now if you have like a small group maybe you know family group two or three people we can work around that too okay go to kingmanforsomeforce.com and don't forget self-defense is a human right now let's go back um more news more information i want to go a little bit to something a little fun okay um recipes it's kind of summertime it's hot and uh, I would like to share with you a recipe that I really enjoy, especially after I come back from the range. It's called I my pasta with cherry tomatoes and some. First of all, you need to get a little bit of uh, notes. Not much to write, but get the notes because this is going to be my recipe that is also part of my book, Spaghetti Western um, Recipes, coming book. First of all, you need pasta. And when I say pasta, don't get garbage pasta. Please do not get Barilla. In my humble opinion, Barilla sucks. Okay? That's my humble opinion, of course. There are other brands of pasta much better. If you come in, if you live in America, I would probably suggest you uh, De Checo, D E C E C C O. It's one of the best you can buy uh, as an industrial level. There are other brands very good at um, Smith. But I don't know the brand. I don't know the name. But it's pretty good. It's made in Italy, and it's really good taste. Now, first of all, you need pasta. Second of all, you need water. And when I say water, please get good water. Don't cook the pasta. Don't boil the pasta in uh, 
water from the tap because the water from the tap is full of fluoride. And, uh, and the point is, uh, believe it or not, chloridation, fluoridation, whatever the chemicals they put in this water it will be absorbed by the pasta. That's a fact. Uh, we need to have uh, we need to have good water, no matter what. So good water, then you need to have good salt. You don't want industrial salt. Uh, at least get sea salt, as pure as possible. Celtic sea salt or Celtic salt is very good. And then, of course, now we start to boil the pasta. Now, before we boil the pasta, at least me, while we boil the pasta, we need to prepare our little special uh, ingredients. We need, first of all, a big bowl with some extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil, get the good stuff. Don't get the one imported from uh, Tunisia or Africa or things like that because it's very disgusting. They've proven that it's uh, completely manipulated and people get sick. Okay? If you can get the one made in Italy, it's the best, my humble opinion. Or get organic one. Even there are now some types in California, a little pricey, but get some good quality extra virgin olive oil. So you get about three or four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil and pour them into this bowl. Then you get about two or three organic garlic cloves. And when I say organic, means uh, get garlic that is not from China, first of all. Because unfortunately, most of this garlic now comes from really countries that you have no idea what type of uh, chemicals, what type of pesticides, also what type of dirt they use, okay? So get good garlic. My humble opinion, the best garlic would be the one that you grow. Grow your own garlic, okay? It's easy to do. So, get garlic, three or four cloves, cloves, and of course, peel them off and put them in the oil. Simple as that. Just chop them enough. That's all you have to do. Then get some cherry tomatoes. If you can, get organic cherry tomatoes are the best. You get about probably like a cup, a cup of organic cherry tomatoes. And then at that point, uh, simply, you need to get some basil, organic basil. Simple as that. You let this basil... You let these cherry tomatoes, you let this garlic, you let this oil all together, mix it up and let it sit for about 20 minutes. Meanwhile, of course, now you start cooking the pasta. The pasta will be ready when you feel it's ready. Don't read just the instructions. Sometimes you read the directions and that's not enough. You got to take this pasta out before it's cooked perfectly. Because when the pasta you think is cooked perfectly, it will keep cooking. Then you're going to have sloppy or floppy or, you know, chewing gum pasta. I hate chewing gum pasta, okay? So that's very important. Now you have this beautiful pasta. You kind of, you know, cooked. You know that you may have an extra probably 30 seconds. You want it al dente. So you drain it. Now leave a little bit, just a little bit of water. You don't want it completely dry. And put the pasta inside the, 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 the bowl the way you have all your tomatoes, garlic, and all these things sitting there. You pour it, mix it up, let it sit. Now, if you want to have a little fresh mozzarella, cut it in small little cubes and spread it around. That's pretty much it. You have an incredible fresh tomatoes pasta that you're going to like so much. If you have the good ingredients, if you have the right pasta, if you have the right tomatoes, the right oil, and you cook the pasta like I told you, you're going to say, Luca, that was great, awesome. And it is. And at that point, maybe a glass of cold white wine, and life could be even much worse. Trust me. All right, that was the recipe of today. Now I want to tell you one more thing. If you want to support the show, uh, please, you know how to do it. K-Talks, if you're local, listening to K-Talks, uh, through K-Talks, support the show, support the radio. Uh, you know, I'm an independent producer. If you want to support what I do, you can be anywhere around the world. That's a beautiful thing. You can go to Amazon or iTunes. Just put my name, Gianluca Zanna, or even go to www.zanna.us, Z-A-N-N-A.us, and you can download any of my songs, any of my songs, for just 99 cents. And doing so, you really support my efforts. I tell you, sometimes I'm always tempted. Why am I doing this? You know, after all, for me, even an hour of show, it takes me two hour preparation. Then it needs me the post production. Then it's kind of, it's a work. I could do these hours and do other things I enjoy. But this is what I really enjoy too. I enjoy sharing information. I enjoy, and most important is a commitment for me to spread the message of liberty. 
through the world. It is not just through America. We are talking to people, their friends and brothers and sisters from around the world. And I really appreciate you listening. Do not go away. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Lucas Zarna. <laughs> Be Your Friend, music and lyrics by myself, Gianluca Zan. Uh, I like to share some of my music. Sometimes I'll share mostly political songs or freedom songs. You know, I write more than that. And that's why I wanted to share also love songs or different type of songs. Now, to end up the show today, uh, you heard about Tommy Robinson. I talk about that many times. The sad thing is he's going to jail. For defying what? A court order. You know, in England, after all, the courts uh, is under completely control of the globalists. Like also here in America, they're getting more and more. I mean, look what's happening. But still, that is completely to a new level. There is no First Amendment. There is no Bill of Rights. You're still a subject under the crown. That's a fact. The sad thing also now in Europe, like for example in Sweden, if you just print, or at least if you just, let's say, mention the name Tommy Robinson, on your Facebook account, you will be banned for 30 days. Think about it. This is complete fascist. This is complete 1984 police control, state police control. So I really feel completely my support for Mr. Tommy Robinson. Tommy Robinson. The sad thing is that I really, truly, this is an execution. This is not just a, 
sending him to jail, this is a complete death sentence. Uh, for sure, it's a torture sentence. Think about it. Uh, going there in a place, uh, by the way, they're going to put them surrounded by Muslims. This prison is not like some sort of a, uh, of a prison for rehabilitation or things like that. This is a serious prison, mostly Muslim population, and uh, they know he is a target. They will, best thing can happen, I say, worst thing can happen, they will torture him. They may rape him. So this is very, very sad. Sad especially because he doesn't deserve it. Sad because the first thing, the first reason why they put him in prison was completely bogus, completely insane. Just because he was under the court reporting facts about Muslim gang, as, you know, being uh, found also guilty of um, uh, sex crimes against minors. Think about it. Just because of that, he was just under the court in a public place broadcasting on Facebook about this events about this news and guess what he got uh, arrested he got thrown out in jail finally he was able to get out and now they're bringing him back in so this not ha is not just happening to mr tommy robinson this can happen now to any other pe people in europe and uh, if we don't watch it in america we'll be next we will be next so it is empty that we talk here uh, you know, love, guns, and freedom. You know, yeah, I go from uh, recipes to guns to, to you know, love. And guess what? That's great. But also, this is the ultimate form of love. Love for our fellow humans, brothers and sisters who believe in freedom around the world. And also love to be um, sure that we don't become slaves. That's the most important thing. Now, I digged out a photo from my past. I posted on Facebook. You can find me at Zanna Gianluca, uh, Facebook, you know. Uh, and I post this photo about me and my grandfather, late grandfather, Carlo Zanna, who died years ago. And um, it's a photo, it's black and white. I was really little. I think maybe I was two years old, no more than that. And my grandfather was holding me by hand. And uh, I tell you, it's pretty amazing. We realize uh, our roots. We realize where we're coming from. I never forgot where I'm coming from. Don't get me wrong, you know. I, yes, I embrace America. I love America. This is the country that I would not function without, with all the problems still. The best place out there, I'm telling you. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I remember where I was from. I don't want to go back to Italy, don't get me wrong, but all the places, emotions, people that have been part of my upbringing, even when it was negative, still was part of who I am today, I will creep in with me. I have an interesting relationship with my grandfather, Carlo. After all, I was the first... Uh, I say nephew, uh, and uh, even he came from he came from a different mentality. He was from south. He wasn't exactly gentle with his wife, my grandmother. He had terrible habits that I don't share completely at all. Uh, like you know, he was an abusive man. Let's be honest. Okay, that's a fact. But he still was my grandfather, and somehow I was trying to look into him the uh, positive things that he may have had, and there were some positives wasn't all bad. He was a man of word. He was a man of principles. He was a man that somehow, uh, he was a hard worker, and he kept his word, and he had sense of honor. Yes, I truly believe that he never should have, you know, embraced that behavior of uh, being a wife beater, to be an abusive husband. Unfortunately, in the South, I don't want to find them excuse, because there are no excuses. I mean, I'm from the same DNA, and I still never touch a woman in my life, and I will never do, unless for pleasure. But my point is, it's very sad when men are recoursing to violence, to control, or to impose their will, or educate, if you want to. Because this is pretty much the same principle of the uh, Muslims. The Muslims in their books, uh, they completely, not only condone, but encourage the beating up of the woman. Think about it, they tell you also how to do it. So unfortunately, Southern Italy, especially with people like that generation, that was a normal habit. And I despise that of him. The same time, as I said, I look at this photo. It's a very nice photo. If you want to look at that, you can go to my Facebook page. And uh, it's very nice. You know, he really loved me in his way. And uh, in his way, I think he was a good grandfather. Even, of course, his problems. I talked to you about it. But he was trying to at least give me that sense of uh, work, a sense of uh, respect and uh, and to be a man, even, of course, the side that of other side I didn't like. But regardless, there was my grandfather, Carlo Zanna, bless his soul, wherever he is, okay? Now, back to the end. 
as I said, guys and ladies, um, Sunday at the time. I don't know what's going to happen next Sunday. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. This, uh, by the way, week, I was going to have so I was driving, and uh, I was started on the way back. I almost uh, closed. No, I closed my eyes, unfortunately. I didn't want to. I fell asleep for two seconds. And I tell you, I probably I would not have been here if a voice would woke me up. A female voice, a lady voice, told me, wake up, Luca, wake up. It's almost giving me chills on my back. And I tell you, that was surreal. I could be dead. I was going 75, 70 miles, 75 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour. And if you close your eyes for two seconds, if you stay off-road, you can hit something and you're gone. So you see, how can I tell you, see you next Sunday? I hope so. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Meanwhile, I say, stay tuned. And I hope you enjoy the show. And don't forget, if you want to support the show, go to www.zanna.us. Don't forget my latest book, um, Perfectly Crazy, 69 Erotic Poems and Love Visions by Luca Zanna, available at Amazon.com. Talk to you next Sunday. I hope so. Ciao. Wake up. Wake up. Yes. Yeah.